Here is my custom scratch built Cobra Wave Crusher. It's from the Rise of Cobra, Cobra Eel and Wave Crusher Target Exclusive. The base is made from Sintra and the hull are made from EVA foam cut, carved and sanded to its shape. With that material, this floats. The Wave Crusher has two versions, the Jet Ski Mode and the underwater submersible mode, which we'll take a look at later. It features a removable torpedo, simple attachment point using wooden dowel that plugs in underneath. It's got front directional fins and a rear fin to control it to its target. And this is the underside view of the vehicle. The original had micro Dual torpedoes underneath won't work for my purpose unless you're torpedoing fish. <laughs> Static mounted twin 7.62 machine guns. Left and right water jet propulsion system. Water sled mode jet propulsion system. Twin propellers. Here's a stepping platform for additional troop. Cobra insignia. Mini sonar dome, control stick, and two headlights. And let's have a look at the water sled mode. Flip down the control stock and plug in the control sticks. Twin 7.62 static machine guns, a 32D torpedo, side mounted water jet propulsion system, twin propellers for the jet ski mode, top mounted rear water jet for submersible mode, self sealing hull, flip up control stop for jet ski mode, flip down for submersible mode, Mini sonar dome and headlights, instrument panel and control stick. That is my custom Cobra Wave Crusher. I'd like to present to you my scratch built mech. It has tons of features which we'll cover. Seen here with the smoke rocket effect from the four rocket boosters simulating its drop from an aircraft. We'll show you later how it's done. Let's begin by looking at the legs. I'm gonna take off the top cockpit. Very simple mechanism to make it rotate. It's got wooden dowel. The six legs are articulated. It can move from left to right up and down for the individual digit of the legs. The foot is like a pointed claw that is also articulated. Inside you could see wires to give the illusion that there's a working mechanism inside. The legs can support its weight, but it's intended to use the stand for display. There are two tanks that carry fuel for the rocket boosters. Here are the two rocket boosters on the side. And let's have a look at the main cockpit. And the top cockpit just plugs into the bottom legs. The dowel doesn't have any tightness or friction, so it freely moves. The reasoning for this is when the legs are tilted at one direction, the heaviest part of the cockpit will point to its natural position. Gave it a grid iron gatling gun, made the ammunition mount, Added the camera, the pilot inside can control the gun, it rotates and elevates. Let's take it off. Rotating periscope. The hatch opens for the pilot to get in. It's got four mounting points for sling load operations. It can be carried by the Albatross gunship. It has an opening handle for the hatch. Antenna on the side. Steps for the figure to climb in. On the battlefield, the pilot will go into the vehicle by using the leg and up the steps and into the hatch. 
And the top of the cockpit is removable. I can easily position the figure inside the cockpit, take photos, see the controls. Let me get a close-up of the controls. Left and right control sticks, dashboard and the control screens. Its main armament is an energy weapon. And on the sides are 40 millimeter automatic grenade launchers. Inside the cockpit are ammunition cans for the 40 millimeter ammunition. And besides that, it's equipped with a rocket launcher. It's in its carry mode. Left and right has two rockets, making it a total of four anti-tank, anti-aircraft rockets. Swivel around for the firing position. And rotates just like that. You'll be able to adjust for the height to clear the Gatling gun. And retracts back in place. And let's have the figure peek through the hatch. And that is my custom scratch-built mech. Let's take a look at the mech pilot. Warrant Officer Mariana Perez Romero. Code name Colombiana. I gave her an Action Force CMMG Banshee 9mm with 33 round Glock magazine. The weapon was incomplete. The Picatinny rail does not have any front rear sight or red dot sight. So I put in a Marauder Gunrunner EOTech holographic sight. How are you gonna hit the target without front sights? Not impressed, Mark II design. At least the dust cover is down. I added a one point sling. Let's take it off. And the most noteworthy mod for Columbiana is her hollow steel brigade helmet. It has no visor. She doesn't need it. The cabin is pressurized and she could see her control panels. On the back of her helmet is a wire for her communication. Let's take off the helmet. Her head sculpt is from the Power Ranger. Yellow, I think. Put back her hairpiece. Here's a close-up of the helmet. This was molded from the male steel brigade that fits her head. The female one does not, meaning the helmeted head is sculpted small, not really in scale. Let's take a look at the clips. Remove her hair, cast the female steel brigade helmet, make it hollow and try to fit it on. Won't fit, it's too small, it's not in scale. Star Wars Black Series with removable helmet do better scale. Another example of bad scaling for helmets or the classified like uh, the Viper. The Alley Viper, the Crimson Guard, Movie Snake Eyes. Compare them side to side with non-helmeted figure and you'll see. Duke has one of the smallest head sculpt in the classified line. Compare his head sculpt face to face with the Viper. Align his chin. His eyes won't even clear the brim of the helmet and can't possibly see through the face shield. May the mold and casting of the Banshee CMMG 33 round Glock magazine. May the pouches glued it on her vest next to the radio. We have the Action Force knife. Added an armor chest neck piece. She's armed with a Maxim 9 with integral silencer co-suppressor. Standard Action Force female holster. You gotta have that vertical strap to hold it in place as you know when you're parachuting or climbing rappelling fast roping that thing's gonna fall off without that vertical strap all right and on her back is a hydration camo back with drinking hose and that completes the breakdown of colombiana the mech pilot It's time for Macross's DIY Tutorials! Follow me! Okay, step into my paint booth. You could either start with a circular pattern 
where I would be gluing the tea light LED. You'd want a opening like a square so you could access your switch. Okay, so then I'm gonna glue this into the base with a glue gun or you could do a random smoke pattern maybe like a clover shape or something like this so first what I do is remove the rubber flame to expose the LED bulb and with a glue gun I'm gonna glue this to the base and with the clear plastic sheet cut from the figure's packaging or clear folder paper protector. I tape it into a cone shape which will simulate the rocket blasts. Test the cone for height and I want it at an angle. Hold it in place for the base and glue it with a glue gun. You don't have to be super perfect. You're gonna be covering this with cotton so it wouldn't matter. Holding it in place until the glue hardens. Then I'll repeat it three more times for all the four rocket boosters. You don't need to get expensive cotton balls. I get mine from the 99 cent store. Looks like this. And what you want to do is expand the cotton by doing this. Apply the glue to your base and your clear cone. Don't worry about getting it perfect or making a mess. You wouldn't see any of this glue when you put on the cotton. Once glued into place, you could uh, expand the cotton, shape it to where you'd like it. Repeat the process until the entire cone and base is covered by your cotton. I'm going to speed up the video. Okay, doing the finishing touches, then we'll paint it with a black spray paint, which will simulate smoke. If you are doing flamethrower effect, you could spray paint with yellow or red, but still use black. I apply more darker paint on the bottom and lighter on the top, and just make sure I don't have a lot of white uh, areas. You can see I'm holding the spray can about a foot away from the smoke effect. Continuously applying the spray paint and making sure I cover up pretty much all the white areas. One more spot here. And that should do it. And I made four of the smoke effects, one for each rocket boosters. Let's test it and turn on the switch. One smoke effect. Two smoke effect. Three smoke effect. And four smoke effect. Ah, 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 ah. Let's turn off the light. And here with the mech legs. Simulated being dropped and then firing the rocket boosters. And that completes the effects. And I'd like to present to you my current vehicle project, the Chimera Mark 7 SDV Swimmer Delivery Vehicle. This is getting ready for mold making. That's why I had it broken down to pieces. Here's the main body. You've got the bottom part, the mission specific tray, torpedo 
limpet mines, mount for the rocket launcher, lots of options here. Standard will have two torpedoes. The front can carry supply or backpacks. There are holes to mount your valivers or classified packs and secured by elastic straps. It has four mounting points for sling load operations. Can be carried by a helicopter or crane. Since it's an open cockpit design. Once the subsurfaces water will be in the compartment. These two holes serves as a pump expelling the water. The troop carrier version holds two on the front and two on the back and has a gun mount. You'll accept your favorite gridiron weapons. Browning M2 or Gatling gun. For my personal version I'll be using a underwater rifle. It has an antenna just like the SDV seal delivery vehicle also have an optional mount for a periscope to avoid being detected underwater about five six feet you'll be raising your periscope swivels 360 degrees rear gun mount when the subsurfaces to engage enemy again holds your favorite gridiron weapons and now for the modular aspect of the vehicle it accepts mission-specific pallets. Here you see the tactical nuke delivery system. It snaps into place. It's removable and held by straps. And the works is a deep sea version with closed cockpit and side robotic arms. The interceptor version will have a mission pallet that carries rocket launchers and an EOD demolition version which comes with a mission pallet that holds limpet mines, demolition tools, etc. Stay tuned for coming updates. I hope you enjoyed this video. Like and share, and if you haven't done so, please subscribe. Thanks a lot.